Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Simon Says Stamp and helping celebrate their new release called Cheer and Joy. You want to make sure you check this one out. There are some beautiful items within this collection, as always. So for today's projects, I am going to be playing with a background stamp, as I throw it across the screen, called Clean Line Trees. And while this is a bunch of triangles, there is a lot that we can do with it. So I'm going to show you three different ways to create cards using this background stamp. So the focus of this video is going to be the backgrounds that I'm creating. And at the end, I will show you the finished cards. So I am an ink smusher. I love smushing ink onto paper. And that is what I'm going to do. So I started out, started out with my bundled sage, put that down onto my craft mat, added some water, and pushed my Bristol vellum paper down into it. I do like to either use watercolor paper or Bristol as it can take on a lot of water. Um, cardstock, you can do this with cardstock, but again, cardstock cannot take a lot of water. For my next panel that I'm going to create, oh, and I added mode lawn to that, I'm going to pull in my aged mahogany and abandoned coral. So just a little bit of a twist with the coral coming in. So I'm going to start out, and this time I used my distress inks. So I'm just going to, the key when you're layering your colors to get the two different colors is dry your cardstock or in this case, my Bristol, in between each layer that you're going to add. So you can see I dried the first layer, and then I just went back into what was on the craft mat of the abandoned coral, and then I dipped down into it again, so I'm able to get those bubbles. Now I'm just going to add some squiggles of some aged mahogany, just so I can get a little bit of a darker tone going across this panel. And once again, I'm going to dry that if I want to get a little bit more. I like the speckles that you can get by using one of these craft mats. Now, it can be any craft mat that you have. But if you use a glass, it doesn't give you those speckles. Um, it'll give you more of a watercolor effect, uh, very washy, if that makes sense. I don't know. Is that a technical term? I think so. So those are the speckles that I am speaking of right there. Um, they look like dots. So once that panel is dry, I want to make sure this one's good and dry because I wasn't quite sure, again, we can do so many different things when it comes to a background stamp. Now this one, while it's got a repeat of the image, it's a specific image. It's not like the words that you have um, or, or anything like that. So this one does give you a lot more versatility on the backgrounds that you can create. So I'm just going to real quick dry this up just a little bit more um, again just to make sure that it is dry before I um, run it through my die cutting machine or emboss or anything like that. So I have my background stamp set up in my stamp positioner and I'm going to uh, use some repositional tape for the back of my panels just to make sure that they'll stay in place because I will, I like to stamp twice um, just to make sure. I'm going to use my anti-static pouch, um, make sure I've got a nice coating of that. And then I'm going to grab my VersaFine ink and I'm going to stamp this image down onto this panel. I'm going to apply some pressure to make sure that I do have a good impression. And again, you can't see it. Um, I just like to stamp twice. I'll worry about the tape later. <laughs> That's on the back of my card. I dug into my stash and got some of the Hero Arts green and gold embossing powder. 
Um, I believe it was from one of their previous monthly kits. And I will heat set this. Now, in that embossing powder, there's little gold flecks, um, which help to give it just a little bit more of a shine. But they don't hang in there too much. You're going to hear me rustling looking at my card. Um, there's a few gold flecks um, within the trees, which does add some great interest, you know, to the trees. Once that is um, heat set and melted, I'm sorry, this is where I grab my mowed lawn. I did not add my mowed lawn before. I just did a double dip of the bundled sage. I'm going to take some of that mowed lawn Sorry about that. That was my phone. Needed to answer that. So I'm taking my mowed lawn, putting it on a block, adding just a little bit of water, and I'm going to use that with my paintbrush and just put some color into the trees. So to get different shades, I'm adding more water, I'm picking up less color, just to get that um, the different shades of what I can get from this color. So you can use your oxides to actually paint with as well. And I know there's just some beautiful videos out there um, to see that. So I'm just going to continue through and just color in each of those trees. So think about it. If you have this green background, you could paint your trees uh, red. You could um, paint them red and blue and, and yellow. I mean, you could have all kinds of colors um, painting up these trees. You could even make them a rainbow. And again, using, you know, I chose to use Christmas colors or what I sometimes consider Christmas colors because, you know, you'll see in a minute. Um, but you don't have to. I mean, these are, if we look at them, because it's called clean line trees, and they're decorated, we think of the holidays. We could also just look at these, that these are triangles, and they deserve a rainbow. And you can certainly do that. These are just triangles that have doodles inside of them. So just another way to stretch this background stamp out. You can use it for the holidays and for birthday cards, celebration cards, and anything else that you're looking for. So for my second background, I'm going to pull the one up again, putting the repositional tape on the back, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to prep it with my anti-static pouch, and I'm going to stamp this a couple times using my Versamark ink. Um, I do like to make sure I have a good impression, so I do like to stamp that twice. Now for this one, I'm going to use gold embossing powder. And I'm going to cover the whole um, piece with that as well. You know, I wasn't quite sure when it came to this panel where I was going to go. Now, what's great is, you know, you can take these panels, do a bunch of them up, and you can cut them to different sizes um, or different strips or different shapes. If you cut a shape out of the center of this, you can use... Um, the part with the cutout for a shaker card. You could use the part that did cut out the die cut as the focal point of your card. So again, there's so many different things that you can do when it comes to your background stamps. Now for this one, since there was just some fun doodles going in our trees, we'll call them trees for this, that I grabbed my Ranger Emboss It pen and for the first trees, I'm going to fill in the ones with the dots. The little tiny look like ornaments. And I'm just going to put a dot of the emboss it pen in there. So that when I come in with my embossing powder, those areas are going to be filled in. So now I have gold um, ornaments on my trees. Um, just by using the pen. I am going to go back into 
um, the trees with the diagonal lines going from side to side and I'm going to fill in on each one a different area so on one of the trees with the lines that go side to side I'm filling in two areas and then on another tree I'm filling in three areas I'm then also looking at the trees that have the lines going from top to bottom so I'm filling in every other line on those as well now you could just stop filling in the dots you could instead of filling the dots just fill in the lines from side to side I mean again that would completely you know be your choice but just adding that little bit of more embossing powder just really does help these to stand out even more so that it's kind of you know unique that way so I'm just going to clean off my um, stamp platform because I have all that repositional tape and I want to block off and just have one strip of these trees out to stamp now I'm awesome because I totally forget that I didn't clean the stamp off so I still have Versamark so we're just using some painters tape I'm taping it on each side to make sure that those areas are well protected making sure my cardstock fits inside of that yeah okay so now that I have my strip I'm going to use my Versamark ink again yeah, there's just times where I amaze myself people I'm, I'm just saying I am just saying I'm gonna prep it with my anti-static tool I'm gonna come in with my Versamark ink I actually remember to remove the painters tape um, which is very surprising because usually I forget that um, and then I go to stamp it to the other side this is where I remember that I didn't clean the stamp so I figured all right I'm gonna give it a shot with my hand mmm yeah not so much yep didn't do so much so you can see I've got lines on the top I've got trees on the bottom don't get me wrong they look absolutely cool what a neat effect if you did heat set that you'd have this shadow going on in the background which would be really cool didn't want that wasn't going for that so I grabbed one of my dry brushes and I'm just brushing away all of that excess embossing powder I'm gonna come in with a smaller one just to get in between the trees um, so that I can clean that up so note to ourselves make sure your stamp is clean yes but again we don't stop we keep going there's always a way to fix it if I was not able to get rid of that embossing powder I would have kept it on because I really do think it would be very interesting it would have been almost like a shadow um, of the other lines so something different anywho so now I'm going to come in with pine needles evergreen bow or bow and broken china so I'm going to add um, use my paintbrush to add some water and then I'm going to drag those colors out so I'm going to go every third tree is going to be in the broken china and then of course I will fill in with my pine and evergreen just to have shades of green but with a tint of blue um, I do like these colors very much so together throw in tumbled glass and I'm a happy camper yes um, and then our final trees where we'll fill those in now, I wanted to make sure that I did add um, a little bit more water um, than I was before because I do want these to have a watercolor look so those are the three different ways that I created the backgrounds or using this background stamp that's the three ways that I used it created a strip created a full background and you'll see with the red one you'll see that I made it a focal point 
And these are the cards, close up, regular speed, not speeding up here. So you can see I took the one sec, the section, I used my uh, Simon Says Stamp Stitch Circle dies along with my Holiday Words on a Line by Simon Says. I thought they were really cute. I used some black cardstock for the tree strip, and then I just placed the full panel down onto my card base and used the Happy Christmas die. So I do hope you enjoyed these. I hope I gave you some ideas for your background stamps. All the products that I used will be listed down below. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure you reach out and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell so that you know when the next video is coming up. Thank you so much for spending just this little bit of time with me. I hope you're having a great day, but always remember what's most important. Always be creative.